and what's bringing to mind thinking about this is, okay, fossil fuels seem to be the issue. How do we get by without any fossil fuels? And that kind of sets an agenda for where you're going to go. But it better be a complete story, otherwise you can cherry pick particular issues and decide to go down a particular path um, and you find it's a blind alley because you haven't thought about that aspect over there. Now this is a snapshot of that related to cities. So there are, there are other issues that sort of feed in. Um, but um, in a way, I am trying to say these trajectories for, uh, need to be set uh, now because otherwise policymakers are going to be setting policy and trajectory um, regulation without the knowledge of the whole picture and you're going to go out and find out. I'll say that. Right, so cities, uh, the challenge is, uh, is resources, they need energy, they need water, and they need food. Uh, they also have waste and water comes out of it, but they have the advantage that you do get some rainwater and you do get some solar energy and you can um, do something about that use that uh, advantageously. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to start on the resources side, I'm going to start on comfort, because that's what, as an engineer, an environmental engineer, that's what we do. We look at um, how to make buildings comfortable, but actually, this is about cities, let's talk about making cities comfortable, because I think, um, I mean, this is a bit fanciful, but um, uh, what we want are trying to do is get to a position where it's nice. Uh, where you can open the windows, you can go walking around, um, and that gives a sense of good social cohesion because we will mix outside. Um, at the moment, in our industrialized um, situation, you don't have to go outside, you can be in your car, you can go be sealed up in a building, all of those are fairly energy intensive um, activities, but actually being outside is when you, you mix together. Uh, now, the cold and windy is um, something that we've seen a bit uh, here uh, uncharacteristically, but actually I'm going to look at hot and dusty and noisy. Um, this is the, the sort of Middle East, but uh, um, very cities that have the glassy facades, uh, the heat is reflected down, um, there's no um, shade, there's, there's nothing to stop you. Being, uh, being very uncomfortable. And that leads to this urban heat island effect, which is uh, something from UCL, they monitored London. And um, you can see the, uh, the crosshairs uh, in um, um, at the British Museum, that's where that centre point is. And these are the number of days where the average temperature um, over 48 hours is more than 19 degrees. Um, so it's one measure of uh, heat island effect. And that point there is a path, which is a, is, which is a hint for where this is going, which is about using planting. Now, this is a fairly obvious thing. One thing that what, if you're going to modify an environment, um, one of the things you need is shade. Now, the thing is that in the winter time you don't want any shade, but in the summertime you do, and that's something that plants do for you quite naturally. And they also provide quite a nice facade for you if, if you uh, now this is a, a, a wisteria, which um, it, it isn't actually the side of the building, it's set um, in front of the, the building, but it allows you to, um, if that was your shape in the summer, you could actually commission this plant by cutting holes in it to let more or less light through as you wanted it to, and um, it will grow back, and it's a quite self-regulating piece of equipment. Uh, in the winter, it drops its leaves, so you let all the light through that you need, and um, that's it. Uh, and, and I want to talk about six ideas, and probably you will not be able to see this, it's a bit, it's a bit uh, but you can actually. Challenging permission wisdom is one of the key things that we find ourselves uh, facing when we address clients or governments uh, in general. Thinking holistically is a very important thing, and I will dwell on all of these things in, and, and make reference to projects using resources efficiently, uh, allowing for change, monitoring and reporting, and aiming high. I think what, what, what uh, one of my colleagues said, Bill was saying before, that you have to address and understand the trajectory where you want to get to is a very important thing. I think I'm just saying it in a different way. Aiming high is 
not trying to get in to, to go halfway through the Atlantic is to get to the other side of the pond. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about that in, in particular. Uh, of course, you can't uh, address the problems of today with today's mentality, and that's again uh, something that we all understand. And one thing that we tried to do last year, I think, in, in long time, which you all know, is uh, because it was published in the Economist last weekend. It's uh, now a standby project because it's not been developed as we thought. And this is a problem, I would say, of the political context of Shanghai and the global economic crisis now. But the, 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 the basic economic rationale of the project is still standing and uh, we hope that it will be developed in, in the near future. So addressing the issue of Shanghai and Chengming inequality was the key driver for um, uh, the building of that bridge that crosses from Shanghai to Chengming Island. The salary in Chengming is six times lower than the salary in, 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 in Shanghai average. So the national government takes a decision to uh, build a bridge to connect the island to the continent. And because of that, it lifts people out of poverty. All very good, but the problem is that the impact in terms of demand for development in the island will be massive in terms of its impact for, for in the environment, and particularly in a very, uh, let's say, a, a attractive bird habitat that is to the right of that site that you can see on the red, on the red area here, um, which is protected. Um, and the idea was to demonstrate that you can somehow, to a degree, not fully, not fully, I'm not claiming that, the, the capital ecological impact or the footprint of your, of your resource consumption and your planetary consumption and habitation from development. And that was a very big, big thing to, to state at that stage. And, and, and when we start looking at some evidence, you can see, for example, that Denmark has done a great deal of effort, regardless of where the fuel comes from, I'm only talking about energy efficiency here, they have managed to grow their economy by 27% in, uh, in the last 26 years, without adding any energy, uh, additional uh, demand for energy to their economy. And that is a massive undertaking. So we can do both to a degree. Um, and what we are trying to say in this particular project is to say that we could do more with less. So the idea of having a suburban region in Shanghai, uh, town, in, in, which was a dormitory town in, 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 in Shanghai, we challenged. We said, we need a town on its own right that has employment and services and facilities so that people can somehow live and work there to a degree. So instead of everybody traveling to Shanghai for work and for other reasons, some people will travel to Shanghai for, 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 for work and other reasons. And because you can put more people into a smaller piece of land, you have a better business case for your project than you can have for the landowner. You have more money to spare in rented commerce in higher environmental standards for your buildings and your infrastructure. So the business case started to make sense for the client and it started to make sense for us and that's what we proposed. And you can only do this when you're starting to think holistically on in 